slips and slides all the way down the slope. Behind him was a cliff nearly 100 meters high. If he fell, he would have fallen to pieces. In a panic, he clasped his fingers to the sand. He almost pulled his fingernails off. Only then did he manage to stop his body. The pain in his hand was so intense. The pain was so intense that Roy shivered. Even his breathing became labored, but he didn't dare to relax. His whole body was pressed against the hill. He tried his best to keep his body steady, but the sand was too soft. It was too soft for Roy's body. It wasn't long before he began to slide further down. Roy waved his hands helplessly, but the bare sandy slope. There was nothing to hold on to. In the end, he had to try and spread his legs. And using his face as a brake, he managed to stop. That's when the phone in his bag suddenly rings. Roy was dumbfounded that his life was in danger. He couldn't even breathe. There was no way he could answer the phone. But the ringing was distracting. After much deliberation, Roy decided to answer it. After all, this could be his only chance of getting out of this mess. So he lifted his head cautiously, tentatively. He let go of his right hand and reached for his backpack. But just as Roy touched the phone, his right hand suddenly slipped. He slides uncontrollably down the cliff. He was on the verge of falling to pieces. He opened his hands with all his might, climbing up with both feet. He managed to hold on to the edge of the cliff. He miraculously managed to save his life. Seeing Roy alive, the waves lapped angrily against the rocks. A loud noise was made. Each stroke was a chilling experience, physical and mental torture. Roy's will was breaking. The waves seemed to have sensed this, and they beat harder on the rocks, shaking the sand off the cliffs.